for joining us. My name is Scott Lowe. I'm a Senior Vice President of Toronto Consulting Services, and we're going to talk today about basic scheduling terminology. <clears throat> if you've ever picked up a critical path method schedule tabular report, sort of the basic printout that you get from any CPM schedule, you'll notice that there's a series of words across the top. Um, and we're basically going to talk today about what those words are, what they mean, and how they relate to a basic schedule for a construction project. Let's start with the word activity. When you use the word activity as it relates to scheduling, what we're talking about is the basic work activity upon which any schedule or plan for a construction is, a project is based. For example, excavate area A or excavate for the footings in wing B. That's a basic scheduling activity, excavation. Typically, in schedules, we're going to depict an activity when we diagram it as a box. That's, this is the situation where we're using a PDF schedule where we're describing uh, activities on the box, or excuse me, activity on the node. Now, activities really have two attributes. Typically, they have an ID number, which is a unique alphanumeric code specifically associated with them. <clears throat> the second uh, component is a description. So, and that typical activity description would be very similar to the one I gave at the beginning as an example here. Excavate area A. Excavate footings, west wing. And typically, the uh, activity ID number and the activity description will appear in the box where the activity is described. Another attribute of any activity is the duration. That is the amount of time that is required in order to perform the activity. Typically, durations will be expressed in work days. So, for example, it might take five work days, about one week in a, when you're doing a normal five-day work week, to construct, say, or to complete, say, the excavation of Area A. The next common scheduling term um, is relationship or logic. The relationship or the logic of a schedule is essentially the connections that we make between activities. And it's really the thing that makes a critical path method or a CPM schedule different from bar chart schedules and the other kinds of schedules you might use on a construction project or other kinds of projects you might be involved with. Let's draw two boxes here and let's say these are two separate activities. I mean we could uh, just make it simple here and call them activities A or B. The kinds of relationships that we can draw or we can make between these two activities include the basic relationship which is that activity B cannot start until activity A finishes. And I think that's the kind of activity we, or, or relationship we all understand. We can't start to construct the footings until after we've excavated the hole where the footings are going to go. We can't start to erect steel until we've completed the footings that the steel is going to be erected atop. Another kind of relationship that you might see on a schedule is a start to start relationship where we're saying that activity B can't start until after activity A starts. For example, we might say we're going to start the installation of metal studs on a floor and that we can't actually start roughing in mechanicals and electricals until after those metal stud and after until after that metal stud rough in begins. 
sometimes we'll put a lag between those stars. I'm just going to write five days down here, and I'm basically what we're saying in this case is that the start of activity B will lag the start of activity A by five days. So that lag is actually a representation of the amount of time I'm going to wait between the start of one activity and the start of the next. The other kind of relationship you might see between activities would be a finish to finish relationship, which basically says that activity B cannot finish until activity A finishes. I can't finish uh, roughing in mechanical until I finish putting all the studs in place. I can't finish painting until I finished the drywall. So that's the third kind of activity. The last kind of activity you really aren't going to see that often. It's technically possible, but it's really not recommended. And that would be a start to finish relationship. So that's logic and relationships. It's basically the connections we make between activities. Now, once we've established the existence of an activity, determined its duration, and shown how it's related to all the other activities, in CPM scheduling, we can then analyze that matrix of information, and we can determine certain things. One of the things we can determine is we can determine the early start date. The early start date is the earliest date that an activity can start and still have finished all the work that logically precedes it. So for example, I can't, the earliest date I can start a steel erection is the earliest date that I can have the footings in place and the earliest date that I can have all the steel shop drawing and submittals approved and fabrication of steel completed and the steel delivered to the site. Those, that's the earliest date that I can start steel erection. Now, if I have an early start date, I can also have an early finish date. And that is the earliest date an activity could finish. And clearly, if you take the duration of the activity and you add it to the early start date, in most cases, you'll get the early finish date. And what we're saying then is that the early finish date is the earliest date the activity can finish given its early start. Another date that is calculated is a date called a late start date. What's the late start date? That's the latest date any activity could start and still finish by the date that we've established for, established for completion of the project. Typically, that finish date for the project will be the contract completion date, but it doesn't have to be. So the late start date is the latest date we could start that project and still finish it by the date we anticipated. Of course, if we have a late start date, we could also have a late finish date. And that late finish date is the latest date we can finish the activity and still complete the project by the date we anticipated. Essentially, the late start date plus the duration of the activity equals the late finish date. Now, for some activities, the early dates and the late dates are the same, and we'll talk about those in a second. But for many activities in a CPM schedule, these two date sets of dates will be different. In other words, an activity can start earlier than it has to start. And we typically think of the difference between when an activity can start and when it must start so as to finish the project by the date we anticipated as a thing we call float. Okay? Now, float, unfortunately, is something that can be easily distorted in a CPM schedule, particularly with modern CPM scheduling software through the use of calendars, through the use of risk constraints, the use of a lot of different kinds of tools that are available to us. But setting those issues aside and boiling down the concept of float to a single definition, basically float is the difference between when we can start an activity and when we must start the activity so as not to delay the project. And if you think about the definitions I gave for early and late dates, it's the difference between the earliest date I can start the work and the late dates, which are the dates by which I must start and finish the work so it's not a delayed project. The last 
term that I want to talk about is the term critical path. The critical path is the path of longest duration through a project. Now, here I'm talking about the critical path of a project. You could have critical paths of milestones and critical paths of other things, but for the sake of simplicity here, to focus on the typical meaning of critical path, let's focus on the critical path to project completion. So it's the longest path of work. It's the path of work that, if I perform it as planned, will determine when I'm going to finish that project. Essentially, it determines the earliest date I can finish that project. So what other important considerations do we have, or what other important features are associated with a critical path? Well, if a critical path is the longest path of work through the project, and it determines when I'm going to finish the project, then if I delay that critical path, I delay the project completion date. And in fact, the only way, really, to delay the project completion date is to delay it along this critical or longest path. Also, if there is a path of work that is a critical path of work, then what's the status of the other paths of work through the project? Well, typically, we would conclude that those paths of work have closed. So, the difference between a critical path and paths with float is essentially the critical path doesn't have any float. It's typically considered to have zero float. Now, again, in modern scheduling software, the critical path might have calculated float that's different than zero, but conceptually, float along the critical path should be zero. So, Critical path is a very important concept. Number one, it's a path of work on a project you have to complete as planned or you'll delay completion. And second of all, if you want to understand why completion is delayed, this is the path of work you have to be looking at. So let's summarize here. The terms we've defined are activity, which is basically a unit of work on a project, Activity ID, which is the activity identification, it's uh, a unique alphanumeric code associated with any activity in a CPM schedule. The activity description, which is just literally the description of the work that's to be performed on the project, like excavating area A. We've defined the term duration, which is essentially exactly what you envision it would be, which is the basic amount of time that it's going to take in order to perform an activity. We've defined relationships, which we identified as finish to start, the basic relationship, start to start, another common relationship, finish to finish, another common relationship, and a kind of relationship you really shouldn't use and shouldn't expect to see, which is start to finish. With those basic pieces of information, activity, uh, identification, duration, and um, uh, uh, relationships, we can then calculate the schedule and we can determine dates like the early start and early finish dates, which are the earliest dates the activity could start or finish given the logic of the schedule and the duration of the work. The late start and late finish dates, were the, which are the latest dates that an activity could start or finish and still finish the project by the date we hope or anticipate. We can also calculate a thing called float, which is the difference between when an activity can start and must start, so as not to delay the project, basically the difference between the early and late dates. And the final term we talked about was the critical path, which is the longest path of work through the project. It's the path of work that determines the project completion date, the earliest date we can finish the project, the only way to delay a project is along the critical path, and if the project is delayed, you need to be looking at the critical path to see why.